So on the, on the cloud automation team, we are about 300 engineers. And uh, we are overall a part of the management BU. Uh, the management BU as such with this set of products was started just about a little under four years ago. And in that time, we've already crossed over a billion dollars as of end of last year. So very rapid growth. So just drilling into this, um, you know, into this diagram just a little bit more, uh, cloud ops does ops management and ops monitoring. And cloud business provides you the information uh, related to your cost profiles, your utilization in terms of financials, and so on and so forth. These two things kind of come together, so I'll just kind of build this slide uh, deck out, slide out. So ops works off of structured data. Structured data may come from you know, events, alarms, et cetera, that may be coming from your compute storage and networking, your underlying compute network and store, uh, uh, infrastructure, your fabric. You get unstructured data, which is coming from your you know, gigabytes of log files and so on that are coming in, that are being generated by your applications. And uh, on the business side, uh, you know, you've got your cost profiles and so on. And these two things kind of drive the automation. So if you think about it, automation is, allows you to uh, uh, sort of uh, you know, aggregate, pool, manage your cloud fabric, which is your physical resources, your virtual resources, multiple kinds of hypervisors, potentially, not just VMware. Uh, Cloud-based um, resources, like if, you are, if you're provisioning to Amazon, uh, if you're provisioning to vCloud Air, uh, all of this, then you have policies that decide how workloads get placed, what sorts of networking gets applied, depending on the kind of workload, and so on. And all these things uh, essentially drive, then you have self-service where you make decisions as to who can get access to what kinds of workloads. And you know, so all of this kind of comes together through the cloud automation uh, product. Okay, uh, drilling a little bit further into cloud management and cloud automation, uh, what, I, you know, what this slide shows is uh, it shows sort of like the, uh, it, it's starting to build out the relationship between core management of your infrastructure and working on things like uh, intelligent placement, uh, figuring out you know, the kinds of resources that people get based on their role and uh, you know, the set of permissions that they have within the organization with what we traditionally think of, de think of, of for you know, DevOps in terms of continuous integration and continuous delivery. So uh, I'll probably uh, uh, you know, end up spending uh, maybe a, the next couple of slides will probably uh, talk a little bit more about this whole notion of DevOps and how we started wo working on a product for DevOps and made that a part of cloud automation. Uh, but in essence, uh, you know, what we have here is what this slide is trying to show you is the first thing that, you try, that we worked on, which was primarily cloud, the vRealize automation product, was very vertically focused in the sense that it looked at infrastructure, how you could manage that infrastructure with policy and bring together your networking, compute, storage, your different kinds of uh, infrastructure, different qualities of infrastructure, and so on. Wrap those in blueprints that defined how your infrastructure was provisioned and how your apps were provisioned on that infrastructure. All right? So it was sort of a much more uh, vertical uh, representation of your workloads. Then we had this problem where these workloads have to actually be deployed into multiple different environments, and they have to progress through these environments. So traditionally, the, you, know, you have uh, apps. You, you know, your developers are building stuff. It's going through a continuous integration phase, and then it goes through a certain life cycle where it goes through either dev, QE, UAT, and either becomes a package product, or it goes into a SaaS deployment, or whatever be the, you know, the, the, the life cycle that we have defined. So we, uh, we realize automation allows for the model once capability. So you have the ability to model your, uh, your workloads, which includes infrastructure and apps, using blueprints and have your intelligent policies and stuff like that that decide how these things get provisioned and how they get deployed. And we realized Codestream, which was a product 
you know, that we just introduced at the end of last year allows you to take this workload and move it and have it go through your series of checks and balances and so on and so forth as it migrates through you know, your different environments and finally gets out into the hands of someone who's either willing to pay some money for it or is your final, cu your final customer. And of course, you know, we've got levels of, you know, layers of security, uh, policy-based governance and self-service to make all of this uh, sort of manageable you know, as, as your user base and all that grows. So about three years ago, uh, you know, I was sort of responsible for bootstrapping uh, the team that uh, built out our self-service governance um, and, and a few other capabilities for our vRealize uh, automation product. So of course I started out, I you know, had no, no engineers and I was starting to recruit, but the interesting thing was that the, one of the first engineers on my team was entirely responsible for building out our CI infrastructure. So we were just, uh, sorry, this <laughs> slide built out a lot quicker than uh, what I expected, faster than what I was you know, able to talk. Uh, but <laughs> uh, you can tell an engineer didn't build a slide. Uh, <laughs> so, so one of the first engineers on my team was essentially solely responsible for building out our CI infrastructure. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of times you get into environments where people really sort of, uh, you know, denigrate or you know, look down on a lot of the things that the folks in this room would really see as absolutely essential, which is spending a lot of time and a, a lot of resources on making sure that your CI, your continuous integration, your continuous delivery essentially is working smoothly. And that that is an essential part of uh, any successful software development effort. So we started out, we were less than five engineers, and we literally had a fully functioning CI environment with a bunch of old ESX boxes that we networked together and put out in the hallways. And we had pre-flights, post-flights, bats, you know, nightlies, and every night we would essentially deploy a, uh, uh, you know, a bleeding edge system that PMs and so on could go and knock about and they could actually give us feedback on, right? Now, what we found is that this was great as a CI tool, right? So we used Jenkins, we extensively used our own products like vSphere and vCloud Director, and so on and so forth. We, we realized automation was not yet there. Uh, and, you know, we had a stack that we would set up with, a v, you know, a vSphere VM, you know, your uh, ESX simulators and so on and so forth. So we would set the stack up and we would spin the stack up for every pre-check-in that we did. And all of this was automated. And this infrastructure essentially stood, stood the test of time and allowed us to essentially grow from you know, less than five to close to 300 and maintain cohesiveness for the product across such a big team over the course of a very you know, rapid growth. But what we found was that we didn't really have a tool to kind of take this good stuff and then take it across our environments as we took a product from developer check-ins to dev, QE, scale performance, and finally your final regression so the product was ready for release. So we didn't have a tool for that. And this is where we started looking at continuous delivery. And we figured out that continuous delivery was really an area that we needed to get into and we needed to build a product for. So at the end of last year, uh, you know, we released the v -real released the vRealize code stream product. And what we also found was that as we go along and as we get into, um, and there's another slide here where, uh, you know, I'll, I'll briefly talk about that, where we talk about how, you know, tools like Salt and so on fit into this overall flow and this overall vision. Okay, what happened here? Okay, so that slide finished. So provide agility and optimize, yeah. 
So uh, I'll quickly build this slide out because I'm kind of running out of time. But uh, the idea here is, so as I said, you know, when I, I kind of started out by saying, look, you know, here's this big world. This is how, you know, we get down into this whole, you know, this world that I'm in, which is, you know, cloud automation. And what does cloud automation really mean for all of us that are building products, that are responsible for getting products out the door, and for being responsible for the infrastructures that support engineering teams and QE teams and so on to get products from keyboards, from your Emacs ID, you know, your uh, Eclipse IDEs, through your Gits, your Perforces, and so on, to a finished product. And this was sort of like the vision that I, tr you know, this sort of like this broad picture that I tried to draw. Uh, but now, it kind of boiled down to how we came up with these two products, even within, within VMware, and how our own internal experience sort of drove the design and development for the, uh, for the CodeStream product. So as we go along, you know, as I said, the, the automation product allows you to define these workloads in the form of blueprints. And a blueprint allows you to define how workloads get provisioned and how the apps, how, the, how your infrastructure is configured. And this is where, uh, you know, we are working closely with, uh, you know, with companies like Sol to essentially make sure that these capabilities are built in. So when you're building a blueprint, you have these capabilities to say that, look, I have, uh, you know, I would like to use Salt Stack to essentially orchestrate and finish this set of jobs. Now that I have given you the infrastructure based on policy with the right networking, with the right security enforced, how do I, you know, with the right fence networking and the right kind of storage that's been placed in the right place, now how do I configure this and how do I get it ready for final consumption? So that's one. The second is, as I go across my different environments, I may not be provisioning infrastructure every time. I may be using brownfield environments. So for example, if you're doing SaaS deployments, then you're not going out there and redeploying your entire SaaS infrastructure, right? So you already have your servers and your infrastructure ready. You're just updating them. And this is another area where we see these tools kind of fitting into this overall process at VMware. Yeah? So that's all I had, really. So a lot of it is, uh, you know, I'm much more from the, uh, you know, from the dev side, so I actually manage uh, the actual development of some of this stuff. So I have, uh, you know, the CodeStream product. Uh, we just released it. We're actually using it uh, for our own processes. Within VMware, there's a uh, VMware IT has picked it up, and they want to use it for, you know, deploying to some of their, some of the apps that they manage, uh, you know, uh, outside-facing apps. Other dev teams within the company have also started picking it up. So we feel that, you know, it was kind of driven out of our own experience, but we feel that, uh, you know, it's something that seems to strike a chord. Okay? So again, like I said, I'll be outside. Um, we've got a couple of folks doing a, a breakout session, so do stop by. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, also, we can show you, show you the de demos of the product and so on and so forth. Yeah? Thanks again. Thank mm -hmm. you.